Good morning, hiking friends. It's Micey. I have made it to the starting point for Passage 11 of the Arizona Trail, Santa Catalina Passage. The weather is perfect. So, here we go. packed my pack the base weight ended up being about 15.4 pounds when I added food fuel and water it brought the total weight of my pack up to 28 pounds which is not too terrible I probably have too much food can never have too much water but I usually pack too much food but that'll go down as I eat it found the trail. This is the one I tried to do in July and it was too hot. But now I believe the weather is perfect. And this section starts at the Gordon here at Bayashi Trailhead, which is right up here. And we're gonna go that way. You guys, it's like 50 degrees cooler on the trail this time than it was when I tried it in July. 50 degrees cooler. My goal for the day is to hike till about 4 or 5 p.m. And I started hiking like 7.30 ish, I think. I already had to make one stop for a thorn that went through the top of my shoe. Well, I've reached the saddle that I reached in July when I had to turn around and go back because in July, by this point, I had already blown through half of my water and today just to get here, I've only had like one swallow of water. That's how different it is temperature wise. The Arizona Trail Association says that this passage is about 18 and a half miles long and is moderate to difficult, which I'm inclined to agree with so far. And that you can do this section year round, which I'm inclined to disagree with. With the exception of the very top of this passage, this is a low elevation passage. So I would only try this in the future, in the fall, the winter, or the spring. And I'm thinking I'm probably more of a fall and a spring for the lower elevations. So, yeah, the thing I love most about backpacking is it takes my two favorite activities of hiking and camping and combines them into one super fun activity. I just saw 
another deer. So, I don't see any water, but judging by how green it is and the wildlife, there must be water around here somewhere. I have run into an obstacle. <sighs> Did that stop me? No. There's a really beautiful blue jay cheeping at me. I wish I could get it on camera because it's not like an eastern blue jay. It's like a scrub jay or a Mexican jay. Very blue. So this is so immense that it creates vertigo. It's like being in a being in an IMAX theater. And this trail is so narrow in here. Must be why they created the Push Ridge Wilderness Bypass for the people who are on horses because I don't think you could take a horse through here at all. It's way too narrow. It's really narrow for people. Really pretty. Finally, I see some water. And a blue mylar balloon. That's funny. Almost a Hutch's pool or Hutch's Pools. Well, I should have been at Hutch's Pool by now, but I took a wrong turn and ended up between a rock and a hard place and had to turn around. Somehow I ended up on the wrong side of a river, but But the good news is, the river actually had water in it. So, I'll be stopping soon for lunch and a hydration break. And Hutch's pool. I guess technically it's more than one pool. going around in here. But isn't it pretty? Well, I feel like a new person. I drank, a, I think, I drank a whole liter of water and I filtered a liter and a half. So now I'm back up to four liters and I can move on. Do you hear that? Well, that's a low bridge. Even for me, I'm practically the size of a gnome. Well, after hiking for seven and a half hours, I have decided to call it a day. It's after three and um, this passage when I got toward Hutch's pool got really hard 
And in the last three miles, I gained about almost 3,000 feet of elevation. So, yeah, I'm done. I am so tired. So, I'm just gonna set up camp here in this nice, basically level spot. Okay, got my bear bag hung. Got my tent. Set up. It's after five. And I am looking ridiculous. But that's the fun thing about hiking. You can look ridiculous. And um, I'm gonna probably go to sleep stupid early because I always go to sleep stupid early anyway. But I'm gonna set my alarm for I think 5 a.m. And who knows, maybe I'll sleep like 10 hours. I'll probably fall asleep and then I'll probably wake up and it'll be like 9 or 10 p.m. because, and then I'll hear noises and yeah, because that's how it goes when you're out in the middle of nowhere, right? But then I was thinking about it when I drove down to Tucson this morning. I think it's more dangerous to drive on the freeway than it is to backpack in the wilderness. I've already told the birds that they should tell the bears and the coyotes and the lions, the lions, the tigers and bears. I told the birds to tell them to not come around my campsite. So hopefully they'll listen and um, yeah, I'll have a good night's sleep. So that's it.